Hi, everyone. So I'm continuing on with Archbishop Vigano's um, drawing painting I'm doing. And I just wanted to real quick show that, uh, number one, that there is, I found another picture of the background that, of his video. And you notice it's much redder. It's much brighter. This is, I can't pronounce it, uh, but it's, it's it, it, a mural that, uh, you know, is, this is what it actually looks like. It's a very bright and vibrant. So his video was obviously desaturated to a large, <laughs> to a huge extent. Although I, I kind of like the desaturated version, uh, even, you know, just as much. But so anyways, I started working, as you can see, I, I uh, worked on it and made it the brighter reds in it and trying to brighten it up a little bit. And also, I wanted to show now in the last video, part one, when I, what I had done was I used the color, the Crayola color pencil first, and then I put the gel on top of the color pencil. Now, Crayola is very waxy. And as you can see on his face, I put a light pink layer of gel pen and it, it looked very blotchy, right? You can see because I was putting <clears throat> gel uh you know, ink on top of waxy base of color pencil. And I, I worried at first, I'm like, oh, is it going to dry that way? And I thought it ruined it, possibly. Although I would fix it later. But I'm happy to report, and you'll be happy to know if you do this, if you use this, you know, gel, <clears throat> gel on top of uh, your waxy color pencils, that when it dries, it dries evenly. It actually. <laughs> you could you could say it's a miracle. I don't know, but uh, whatever the case may be, because I, I don't uh, I haven't been using a lot of gel ink on top of uh, color pencils, so uh, it's a learning curve for me too. I'm learning new things here. What's happening? And you can see uh, this is the way it looks now. Um, let me close that out. So the blotchy is the way, and you can see. I'll zoom in a bit here. You can see his face now. It it dried very evenly. You know, it, it, there's no blotchiness at all. So don't panic if you put your, if you're, you're using the glycerin and gel and painting on top of uh, your color pencil. And if it looks blotchy as it's drying, don't worry about it. It will, it dries much lighter, first of all, and then it, the blotchiness doesn't show. So it looks very smooth and even. And uh, the paper is, like I said, this is like a cheap sketch pad I got. It's like this. I don't know, you've probably seen it before. It's this Log Create one. It's it's a very neat paper, and so it's it's kind of warping on the other side too. It's not made for liquid. You can see all the warping going on there. So that kind of happens as well. It's to be warned. So I don't want to put any more stress on the paper than need be. But yeah, so then I'm gonna stop there with his face as far as uh, painting on top of it. I think for now. And yeah, so I'm just trying to see if I can uh, finish this up and have it look, you know, somewhat decent, <laughs> somewhat similar, uh, because I'm not, you know, again, paint drawing and copying a mural is, is new for me as well with the gel ink. So, but it is a lot of fun painting with it. So now I did try to, you cannot put the color pencil, at least not the Crayola color pencil on top of the gel pen that's already on top. So I cannot put any more color pencil on there. I might with a Prismacolor pencil, maybe a more expensive pencil with less wax in it would be able to go over this. But I'm thinking I'm just gonna, I could just put gel, more gel pen on top of the gel to sort of uh, work on this some more and hopefully have a good result. All right, so I'm going to be coloring the with a wax painting, not with a wax, with the gel painting uh, the background area here, and it's using a gray. Oh, that's the red one. Excuse me. Then I'm going to go over the red outfits and try to put some shadows there. But start with the gray background here, taking out a light gray color. Yeah, so a huge relief that when it dries, 
So feel free to use the gel hands on painting with the glycerol on top of your color pencil, even if it looks blotchy, no worries. Saves wonderfully. So I might put a little gray here in his outfit, actually. I want to darken that up a little bit. Looking a little too, oh, I got a little red on there, I think. That's okay. This is also part of his outfit back here. Sort of. Going over his shoulder here. Okay. So I'm actually, I'm looking at the darker, more vivid uh, picture. It's got a little more detail than the video did, so I can see a little bit more of uh, the colors of his outfit. There's a lot more detail and shadowing going on than could be seen in the video. The video is a bit washed out, like, you know, as I said, so. Let's clear that in a little. And as you can see that in the darker video, uh, the more vivid, accurate depiction, it's like his, his hair is a lot darker. It's the whole painting's just much more vibrant and darker. So I'm trying to, to darken it up a little bit there. Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to the background, put some more gray on my sheet here. A little light gray. And just yeah, I'm just gonna do the background and I am just gonna I'm just gonna go just make it just light gray going out. I'm not gonna do a lot of detail. I was planning on doing a lot of detail on the whole page, but I think I'll just stop at the second for the seventh second circle, because it's sort of like surrounded by two arcs. I have not checked the news today to get any updates on the situation. I don't know if it's a done deal that he's getting excommunicated. I mean, everyone's saying that's what they're doing. But I think it's like a sort of a kind of a show trial that they're doing at the moment. So maybe it's a possibility they won't do it. Because everyone, no one's, everyone loves uh, Vigano. So, <laughs> you know, it would only further divide people, I think, in the church if they were to excommunicate such a popular man who people love and respect and know tells the truth. So this will be something to watch and see what develops, how this develops. I mean, uh, <clears throat> Vigano is the only um, prominent clergy member at the Catholic Church that I know of who spoke and exposed this uh, World Economic Forum and their evil plans that they have succeeded with uh, so far. Uh, I've noticed, though, that uh, there's a lot of information and people discussing different topics about it. And right now, my concern is that there's not enough people talking about uh, what's in the White House website. Now, if you go to the White House website, uh, the 2021 Nanotech agreement that Biden signed, October 2021, you look at their nanotech, you know, you're in the middle of a supposed pandemic, and Biden is signing nanotech um, you know, reports here or legislation 
And basically, this if you look at the report, it's right on the White House website. This nanotech, you look at the PDF of the report, the National Security Nanotech in America, and you do a, uh, do a find for vaccines, it says right there in the White House report that there is nanotechnology in vaccines that they're using and they want to use more of. So obviously, these uh, mRNA, RNA shots have nanotechnology in them. So, but nobody talks about it. You don't hear anyone bringing up the nanotechnology. You hear a lot about spike proteins and injuries and this, you know, court battle, suing Pfizer, all that. But nobody's saying, well, what about these nanotech? What is it? What does it do? And that brings you to, of course, you have to go to alternate platforms. <laughs> You're not going to find anything on YouTube about it, unfortunately. And it seems like they're trying to keep that um, hidden or like not have anyone talk about it. So they just did a gray, sort of a gray outside there. Okay, so I did a little bit more gray. I think I'm going to, I want a darker gray. So um, we have darker gray and pen here. I do want to make his outfit a little bit darker in here. Let's sort of smudge it out. Let's try to... Now this paper is not made for liquid. It's not, so it's. I'm not worried that I'm I'm gonna go right through the paper any second. So I've got to be careful here. Uh, as far as how <laughs> much more shall I try to get away with? Yeah, I'm gonna have to. Because it is getting. A, little warped here, so I'm getting a little disappointed in my... I had only intended to, you know, do one layer of pencil and then a little high, you know, sort of covering it with the... Um, gel pen, like just doing a layer of it. So... Now, you just do what you can do and see, hope for the best. <laughs> All right, so next I'm going to put some darker red on the, and I painted these in with gel. This is all gel, right? So I'm going to go over with the darker red because there are, you know, different shades here of the red. Um, so to get in some of the shadows here, I mean, they are cloth there you know their robes so it is kind of it gets the shadowing of it gets kind of comp i don't know, say complicated but it's not yeah it's not your usual shadow you know drawing and shading on an object when it comes to these outfits you have to sort of make it look like fabric which is a whole study and shading fabric, right? So uh, just gonna it doesn't have to be exact. I'm just gonna you know just want to see that there's different see that looks better already just having a few lines in there does not doesn't have to be perfect now, shading of the fabric which gets very complicated. You just put a little bit of shading in there with a darker red. And it just because it is so uh a small part of the drawing just in the background here. I don't want it to stand out. So I don't want to put too many details either because it is sort of the background here, just not a focal point, right? So yeah, so I think that that's pretty happy with that. That and then that side's done. So you can see just uh the shading on the red there. So just give it a couple different colors in there. We'll highlight and low light there. And the same up here. I'll put some shading. So I didn't, you know, get an exact, uh, I didn't draw it exactly as it looks, uh, you know, just like I said, this is just the background. So just to sort of set this 
you know, indicate it, but not trying to draw it exactly. Maybe impression of it. Okay, so it's a little bit here. I'm just sort of putting the gel pen directly on and then just using just a very light amount of glycerin to smudge it just a little bit, just give it a little fuzziness because it is blurring it a little bit. All right, so I'm going to go back to the light gray and learn a little bit more here. I'm just coloring it straight on the paper. Getting that. <clears throat> and I think I'll put a little bit on the cross, give it a little shading here. Make it a little more three-dimensional. Um, I think I will also use it on the outfit here and give it a little bit of a shaded look there. Some red on there. That's all right. There we go. And now with the outfits, they're like a bright yellow, sort of an orangey yellow. I thought I had done an orangey yellow there, but didn't it kind of uh, it, the gel pen dries lighter, so I'm going to have to go with a darker yellow type color here, a more orangey color. So I'm going to pull out a light orange gel pen that I have here. Which one do I want to use? Yeah. Let me see here. Okay, so I got a lighter one, a darker one here. So let's try this out and see if I can. I get a couple of different shades in here, so it's not so plain looking. It's kind of a little bit of a kind of texture of some sort in the background. I thought that's kind of sloppy. I didn't really I put a lot of gel on that, so it splurs that around. So there we go. Yeah, I, I kind of want it to look textured, so that's why I'm using the pen directly on the paper to leave a little mark intentionally. If I didn't want to mark, I would just I would of course put it on the um, the sheet that I have here and, and just, I think it's like a stucco kind of background. That's why I want to have some texture there. And here there's some lines in this outfit for the shading. I'm just going to get that in there. Just very quickly, very roughly. There's some interest there. And I'm just going to do the same on this side. We have some lines, this outfit here. Yeah, so I think that's coming together I don't know, a little bit better. It's not so plain the background there. Yeah, it looks a little more um, like a staccato kind of background or something. And so by putting the lines directly on top of the color pencil, so I had used yellow color pencil. Uh, for the base, and then I covered it with the yellow 
gel pen. And so now I'm going back over the yellow gel pen that I put down with an RNG gel pen. So it is, excuse me, it's possible to do several layers of the gel pen on top of each other. And it's kind of like ink tense pencils, you know, like using ink tense because you're using ink just like an ink tense pencil. So it just stays. So unlike watercolor, you might where you might raise up some of the, the earlier um, uh, paint that you put down. This doesn't, if we put a layer of gel pen down, it stays, it's permanent. So you can be nicer and easier to layer on top of with more gel pen. So it's another advantage. Okay, so that's what I have so far. Now I'm going to do the halos around the angels on the side and around the Jesus. So now I want it smoother, so I'm going to I take it out the yellow. And I'm going to paint it on this time. I'm going to just draw it. I mean, I could draw it right on, but I think it'll be nicer if I paint it on. It'll be smoother, lighter layer. Some gel pens, uh, the ink flows out much easier than others. You have to sit here a while getting it out. Can be the worst when you're trying to get that gel out and it's not coming out as quickly as you like. <laughs> so in that way, gel pens can be a little bit um, of a pain. <laughs> Unlike color pencils, you can always get the color out. That's why I always look like color pencils. Best color pencils and watercolor are the best in my opinion. They never run out, and you always get the color when you want it. You don't have to struggle. Like markers or gel pens, there's always a point in time when you have struggle sometimes getting out the color. You know, <laughs> it's just the nature of the beast, right? But you know, the results are so much fun, and it is a lot of fun to paint with. I have to admit, it's it's a lot of fun painting with the gel. I'm have I've been having a blast with this for sure. But I think another challenging thing with this painting is that I am I'm not sure what I'm coloring. Like <laughs> there are these monsters in the background with the angels. Like I recognize the angels. But there are these like demon figures with these weird green wings that I've never seen before. So yeah, I'm obviously I'm no expert on this artwork. Uh so I'm like, what am I trying to copy here? What is this? So that's another bit of the struggle. I'm like trying to figure out what am I doing here? But of course, you don't have to know exactly what it is to copy something. And actually it might in some ways it might be better because then you're you don't have any preconceived uh patterns or what how it should look. You know, it's one of the hang ups of an artist is you oh, you're drawing faces or whatnot. Sometimes you get stuck drawing something a certain way and you fall back on that too much. All right, anyways, okay, so I got a green here. I want to do highlights on the wings on the angels and put in some lines here for that. Um, just putting in a little bit of shading there. You can't really smudge it too much uh, with this, with the gel pen. So if you want to get a, a good gradient um, blend, you want to paint it on. Uh, but I want the lines for the sh in this case, because there's, there's creases in the fabric and in the wings of feathers and whatnot. So I, I want it to be more, less blended and more lines going in so that's intentional so I, I don't want it um too much blending around there okay and yeah so these are these green 
green wings here from this demon thing, and they're like eyeballs on them. It's really, you know, that one eye thing going on. <laughs> so you know how everyone knows that the eye symbolism is the satanic, masonic, you know, all-seeing eye thing. It's on the dollar bill and everywhere. So he's got these want these eyes on these demons here. So kind of confirms what we already knew about those eyes. Um, yeah, there you have it. <laughs> this painting confirms it again. So I'm doing uh, the eyeballs here. I don't know if you can see, but I'm, pu I'm putting in the eyeballs because that's what's in the painting. These eyeballs. Yikes. <laughs> I mean, who would thought that to paint a demon with eyeballs on his wings? I mean, wow. I didn't even, I wouldn't even have thought of that. I don't believe. That makes sense, though. Makes sense. So I'm just, I think I'm just going to finish that up right there. I mean, um, I think I've gotten pretty much all that I wanted to accomplish with this. So, yeah, I'm just going to snap this, and that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks again for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.